chilly this morning, but we're full of warm hearts, I'm sure. Lovely to be here. My name is Michael Thurlow, my wife Noel is with us, and uh, we've travelled up the road to come and open God's Word and to speak to you. I'm going to share on Elijah. A bit obvious, but there you go, <laughs> just in case you forget where we go. A great prophet of God, and um, we're going to look at being obedient, we're going to look at triumphing over adversity, we're going to look at being faithful and sharing in God's Word together. But let us pray as we come and open the Word today. Father God, I thank you that we can just take a moment now to consider your Word. Lord, all that you want to say to us this morning. Thank you for, your, for men and women in the Bible that did extraordinary things, were faithful and honoured you. And may we be encouraged by that this morning as we be obedient to your call, as we step out in faith, as at times we go through pain and suffering, but God, we hang on to you and honour you and follow you and serve you. So Lord, take these words today and may you inspire us and encourage us once again here in this place. In Jesus' name, Amen. Elijah was one of God's prophets. When he spoke what God told him to do, amazing things happened. We'll see this morning how important it is to depend on God. We'll see some miracles, some power, and some dependence. And this morning, as we just take a few moments, I want us to again be amazed at how awesome God is. How as men and women, we can rely on Him. When everything else is gone, we still have God. We meet Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 17, and that's where we'll be this morning as we journey through this passage. Elijah's name means, my God is Jehovah, or the Lord is my God. Just reading 1 Kings 17 in the first verse there, it'll be on the screen for you. Now Elijah, the Tishabite, from Tishbe, in, from Tishbe in Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will neither be dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. That's a powerful statement. Ahab was an evil, evil king. And this is a very dark time in the history of God's people. And basically God said, this is enough. No more rain. And God raises up a man, Elijah, his prophet. One person coming and taking a stand for God. May we be men and women, old and young, mums and dads, older people. May we come and take a stand for God. Let us be one person who can make a difference for him. Elijah speaks out the word and there's no rain, nothing, zip, not a drop of dew, not a speck of rain, except if he says so. This would have been a hard time for the country as drought hit. The place would have shut down. Livestock, crops, maybe people lost their life. But no rain. No more rain. What faith. Elijah had to speak out that word. God then removes Elijah from this place. Because God is now going to take him through three different seasons. And the first is isolated pain. And we pick the story up again in verses 2 and 3. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Leave here and turn eastward and hide in the Kareth ravine east of the Jordan. This ravine was a place of isolation. And here God takes Elijah to humble him and to teach him. Because Elijah needs now to solely rely on God. Maybe we feel isolated from God. Maybe we wonder at times, Lord, where are you? 
But often God has not moved, but we have. We may feel we've got nothing left to give, as God does a work in us. Hey, I'm in the Kareth Ravine. I'm in a place of loneliness and isolation. Maybe God's preparing us for that next season. It's dry now, but rain will be coming. As we reap what we sow, as we stay dependent and faithful on Him, we see Elijah moving into a, a time of dependence in 1 Kings 17, 4 to 6. You'll drink from the brook, and I've ordered the ravens to feed you there. So he did what the Lord told him, and he went to the Kareth Ravine east of the Jordan, and he stayed there. So he did what the Lord told him. The ravens brought, bread, brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Isn't that amazing? For those of you that are vegetarian, it's okay. But God loves meat. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> Bread and meat, morning and night. It was fly through, wasn't it? As they flew on him, not drive through. You'll catch up in a minute. Fly through. <laughs> Elijah's all by himself. And here God is providing some water from a brook. But the land was in drought. And ravens bringing meat and bread. So what's God saying here? What's he saying to me? What's he saying to you? You can count on me. I will provide. When things look dire, when things look hopeless, I will provide for you. I am the faithful God. You can trust in me, hang on to me, believe in me. I am in control. And also God wants us to see this morning that he knows our needs. When things fail us, people and health and work, God will not. God's calling out to some of us this morning, trust me more. Trust me more. Because he's ready to show you his faithfulness. Time to let go and let God be Lord of our life. When you cannot depend on what you used to depend on, God says, I will provide. The Lord Almighty says, I will be there for you. It's interesting that God did not give Elijah a couple of days, food, a week, a month, but just what he needed for that day, in the morning and in the evening. Enough for the day. Some of us are hurt and alone, afraid, but God gives us enough for the day. Enough for the day to get through. I'll be your comfort for today. You don't have much, but I'll provide for you for today. You feel weak, but I'll be your strength for today. People have left you, but I'll be your friend for today. I will not bring more than you need, but I will bring exactly what you need, says God, for today. God wants us to trust in Him instead of worrying, no matter what the future may look like. Trusting Him is a process, it's, it's not a one-off event. As we go on this journey called life, with twists and turns and ups and downs, as we faithfully follow Him. Elijah, I'll provide for you. For God said, I am the bread of life. God is teaching him and breaking him and humbling him. He only has God to depend on in this lonely ravine. And a few birds in the morning and in the evening that bring him some food. Continuing on in our passage this morning, it's 1 Kings 17. 7 to 9, as we see our, our, our third point, unconditional obedience. 
Sometime later the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Sorry? Devastating. The word of the Lord came. Came to him, go at once to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. Ah, things are changing. The, book, the brook goes dry, but God wants Elijah to move on. Friends, the same God who gives the water can take it away. Sometimes things happen over here so God can get us to where we need to be. Something happens over here and God then moves us over there. Things happen. So we're in the next place at the right time because God is calling and moving and shaping us and saying, hey, be obedient to me and take that step. Take that next step. Some of us know what God is talking about this morning. God has called you here. I have a place for you. This is where I need you to be. We may stand at the edge of that dry brook and go, what on earth are you up to, God? You were supplying me with water and now it's gone? We cannot imagine what is next. And all we can see is this dry creek bed. But eventually we'll see beyond that dry creek bed. For God often guides by what he does not provide. God often guides by what he does not provide. God is calling you and I this morning to be obedient to him. A number of years back, you may remember the movie The Karate Kid. Good old Daniel's son and Mr. Minagi. As, as this young boy painted the fence and, and waxed the car, and there's been other movies and newer movies in one of them, they're, they're putting a jacket on a peg and taking the jacket off and putting the jacket on. And, and, and it's like, what on earth is this about? I'm here to learn karate. I'm doing stuff with paint, I'm putting jackets on, I'm waxing cars. It all seems a little bit confusing if you've seen the movies. I've come to fight, to learn karate. Friends, at times doing something that may seem insignificant will now prepare you for greater things in the future. Be faithful with what you must do now. Maybe that's praying. Maybe that's encouraging someone. Maybe that's serving in the church in some way. Maybe that's reaching out to your friend at work or your neighbour over the fence. Do what you can do now and let's see God bring those greater things. God says to the prophet Elijah, go to the ravine. And I'll provide there a brook, but it dries up. And now he's calling him to go to Zarephath. God, what are you up to? God's saying, Elijah, depend on me. Trust in me. Michael, depend on me. Trust in me. Whatever. Your name is today. God's saying, depend on me. Trust in me. For God can be trusted. Picking up our story in 1 Kings 17, 10 to 14. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And can you bring me a piece of bread? As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replies, I don't have any bread, only, only a handful of flour in a jar and, and a little bit of oil in a jug. I'm here gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and for my son, that we may eat it and die. Isn't that tragic? Here's this widow, 
planning her last meal, planning her last breath. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and for my son that we may eat it and die. But Elijah, the man of faith, says to her, don't be afraid, go home and do as you have said. Very interesting, but first make me a small cake of bread from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and for your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the flour, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run out until the day Lord gives rain upon the land. Here is this impossible situation, this tragic scene. But Elijah comes and speaks life and faith into this situation and blesses this woman and blesses the child and provides for them and provides for himself for he honoured God and God said, simply tell her to go and continue to live. To make a little loaf of bread and to, to serve you and to serve her son. Elijah takes this impossible situation and turns it around. You'll have enough food for yourself. You'll have enough food for your son. You'll have enough food for me as the day goes on and the weeks go on until there's rain on the land. Dear lady, death is not knocking at your door. For God has said, I will provide for you. Enough for their day. But if you know the story, sadly, friends, time passes. And this widow's son dies. If you're a widow, life is hard. Hard enough, but at least she had a son that could help her, take care of her and provide. And but now he dies. So Elijah gets this young boy, this lifeless body, and he takes him up to a room and he lies him upon a bed and then he lies his body across the dead body three times. He lies his body across the young boy's body and he cries out to God, Restore his life! Restore his life! Restore his life! And God hears his cry and in verse 22 the Lord heard Elijah's cry. Friend, he's heard your cry too. And the boy's life returned. Returned to him and he lived. Elijah picked up the child and carried him down from the room into the house. He gave him to his mother and said, Look, look, your son is alive. He was dead, but now alive. Friends, God has brought his prophet Elijah full circle. Through a time of pain, through a time of dependence, and through a time of obedience. What season are we at at the moment? A season of pain, a season of dependence, or a season of obedience. Maybe that's daily. Maybe we move through these three things daily. But let us not give up on God. Let us not give up on each other. Whatever your season, whatever your situation, I pray that you're relying on Him and trusting in Him. For God wants to do a work in me and God wants to do a work in you. Let him do those amazing things through us as we be his hands and feet, as we be his, his words of hope and truth. Look, your son is alive. God restores. God heals. Let us trust in him. Let God be God. God bless you. Amen. Let's pray.
Father God, I thank you. We need to let you be you. And faith we follow. At times, Lord God, we wonder why. What are you up to? But let us be faithful. Bring the rain. Bring the provision. Bring what we need at just the right time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing our final song. Thank you. <coughs>
forever and ever. Amen. Please join us.